Hey guys, Jim here from Quail Hollow Bird Farm, and some of you out there may also know me as host of the TV show Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV. What I'm going to do today is I want to talk to you a little bit. Uh, here on the farm, we raise quail. We raise them for folks who just want them for pets. We raise them for uh, uh, guys that want to train their, their bird dogs, and we also have quail that we have that uh, you know, people might want to have just, just to eat, and we also have eggs. So that's one of the things we do with quail here on the farm. And I'm working on a series of different videos to help people out there understand the principles you need to know to raise quail. It's not like raising chickens. Uh, Bob White quail are very... Uh, a bird that gets that can get stressed out and they're not too disease tolerant so they're a little harder to raise than you, if you were raising chickens or ducks or something like that. So I want to go through some steps and show you here after the hatching process. Right here beside me I have a, a uh, GQ1502 uh, sportsman hatcher, sportsman um, uh, incubator. And right now, there's approximately 500 eggs in there. Now, these eggs are due to hatch out in probably, I would say, about another two days, at least somewhere. It should be about another two days if my calculations are right. But what I want to show you is, after these birds hatch, where do they go from there? What we have is we have a, a, a brooder system. And I've worked over the years that we've been doing this, um, you know, try to devise a good system, and this one here works out really well. So when they come out, I have right here a container, and basically what it is, is it's a, uh, a cattle trough is what it is, okay? And it holds probably 300 gallons of water, but it will also hold about 100 to 125 quail. So we'll brood them first, in this big container. I'm going to get here and show you in just a minute how I prepare this thing. So we'll brood them in here first and then after about two weeks or so we will move them out to our brooder houses which are out here by our pen. So let me go ahead and I'm going to show you this big container that we have. I'm going to show you how we prepare them and what we do and you know this 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 little short video is more or less for the guy who wants to raise three or four five hundred quail. Um, you know, maybe you can downsize this technique a little bit if you just want to raise 25 or so, and then you can just downsize this technique. All right, what we have here is your basic 300 gallon trough. And as you can see, there's nothing in it right now. It is fairly empty, and soon here we'll be having quail in there. But I just want to show you the preparations I'm going to make. Now, this, this, this one particular one is probably hatched out, I would say, probably about 5,000 birds over its period of time we've had it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a piece of plastic and line the bottom. Because over time what happens is these are galvanized, but because of the acidity in the quail urine and things like that, they, it will rust the galvanize. So um, what I like to do is I like to put a piece of plastic down first before I put my uh, shavings in there. And it makes it easier to clean it up in the, you know, when you're all done for cleanup, number one. Number two, it keeps any urine or any uh, water or anything getting down and reaching the tub itself and promoting more rust. So I'm going to put this in here and get it cut out. All right, I've already taken here and I've already cleaned and vacuumed the inside of here, but something that's very important to do is to sanitize this area a little bit. And like I say, I've already cleaned it and wiped it down, but I always take a little bit of water and Clorox mixture because that will kill any bacteria and things like that in here. And I'll just lightly mist the area in here with this Clorox. And also miss the bottom of the floor with it and this is a real good disinfectant and it's a real good killer of anything that might be in here that could harm your quail. Alright, now that that's done and it will dry up pretty quick, I just want to lay my plastic out in here. All right. 
and then I'm going to cut it off to the appropriate size. All right, now that I've got my plastic sheeting laid down on the bottom of my, my tub here to protect it, what I want is I want a good premium quality shavings. And what I mean by the premium quality is it, it really comes out more pure shavings. If you're not careful, you can get a lot of shavings that will have a lot of fine dust in there, and that's not good for your birds, whether it's chickens or ducks or quail, no matter what, because what will happen is they will peck away and they'll eat on that sawdust. You don't want them to get that in the digestive system this early in their life. So get you a good quality wood shavings, uh, a eight cubic foot bag, which is what this is, it probably weighs 25 pounds. It will last us for probably, I would say, two or three hatchings at a time. So it goes, it goes quite a long ways. And all I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take these shavings and put them in the bottom of my brooder. And then the next thing I'm gonna do after that is I'm gonna take and I'm just gonna spread them out and get everything so I have about a two and a half to three inch layer of shavings in the bottom of my brooder, okay? Okay, now that I've got that done, I want to give them a good food supply. And I want to show you how, I'm, how I did that. What I basically did is I took my tub and cut me out a piece of plywood and put a hole in it so it would hold a piece of PVC, okay? And here is a piece of um, probably, I think, I think it's like three inch PVC, okay? You want a big diameter tube because you don't want your, uh, your starter feed or your grower feed getting clogged up in here. This is really handy to have, especially when you're going to have a large number of birds in here, so you don't have to keep feeding them every day. I'm not saying you don't have to check them every day. This way you don't have to feed them every day. And I can take care of all this right here before my chicks are ready to put in the brooder and get it all pre-warmed up. So all I've done is I've just taken a five gallon water jug and cut the top off of it. And if you cut the top off of it right, you can use the bottom half and the other half as a cover. Okay, and there's you a good cover. What you need to do next is you need to get you an adapter to, to screw onto here so that it will set on top of your PVC. Okay, and that's gonna go down through here just like so. Now I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna put here. I'm gonna have to get one, but I'm gonna show you what I put on the bottom here that helps distribute the, the food to the birds. Okay, so what I have is I have, let me pull this back out so I can show you a little bit better. What I have is I have a simple chick feeder, okay? This is a galvanized one. It has a lip on here where you would put a mason jar on there, but instead what I did is I went and got me an adapter to go in there and put screws on it to screw it in, and then I got another adapter for here. So what basically I have is a big, tall, back up a little bit, a big, tall feeder system, okay? Now, I want to set this in here, and I'm going to need to put a block of wood down there to keep it up off the pine shavings, because if you don't, then shavings will get in there. They'll, they'll, they'll get it full of shavings, so I'm going to do that and set this up so you can see better what this is going to do. One thing what you can do is you, is you need to support this container up off from the shavings, okay? And one thing you can do is take an old egg carton, these are what our quail eggs come in, and just use that to keep it up off the shavings so they don't get shavings down in there. All right, so I'm gonna set that in there. I guess, hopefully the camera's gonna get most of this. Uh, I'm gonna set that in there about like that, and this is gonna sit on top. The quail will get up in there. You would think maybe that's gonna to be too high off the ground, but it's not going to be. Because once you get the once you get the the grain in here and everything, it will it will sink down and they'll be be able to get in there uh, just fine. Uh, let me go ahead and I'll start putting some grain in here. Now, 
This here is a Kickstarter brand that we use, and I like it because it's it doesn't have it's not very powdery. Some of this stuff you get, it's got more powder content than I think it actually has food value. So this is a 24% starter. It's got a little bit of medication already in the in it, and we like that. Uh, something else we feed our birds when we put the water in there is we'll feed them minerals and um, it's like a, like a Gatorade is what it is. And that just helps them if they're stressed out to be, it just helps, helps keep their immune system and their energy up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill this hopper up and get it ready. And one of the reasons I'm doing this is because I'm two days out from the hatch. I'm going to put my heat on here. And I want this thing to be already up to temperature, so when these birds come out of the, are out of the um, incubator, they're ready to go right into the, the brooder, okay? So I'm, I'm preparing everything now so everything's up to temperature. And I'm going to show you what happens. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this hopper up and I'm going to show you what happens. So you just watch that bowl at the end and this food this is going to go right down in there, and it's going to fill right up. And as they eat, it's going to dispense itself out of this big container that I have up here. And we're just going to... I don't usually fill it up to the top unless it's going to be... Unless I have to leave the farm or something, or something like that. I can't be around to watch it, but that right there is going to be enough for them chicks for probably about four or five days. All right, now that I've got that done, there's just a couple more steps that I need to do. One is I've got to get a water source in there, and the next thing i got to do is I've got to get my top on, and I've got to get my heat source going. And I use, uh, you know, good clean water. Always make sure you've got good clean water. And like I said, I use a mineral, I'll get it for you here, that I put into the water that just helps to, uh, just helps to sustain them a little bit more. All right, now this is the water that I use. You can get to these, any of the farm supply places. Uh, this is what we use for them. Now there's one thing you gotta remember. These are very small chicks and that's a big space and they can get in there and they will drown. So what you need to do is we usually take marbles or you can take some small rocks and build this area up level. Okay, so that the birds, the chicks, can't get into there and drown. Now, they'll be able to get in there through the spaces and get plenty of water. That's not, a, that's not an issue. We've been doing it this way for 10 years and it works great. You know, and, and this way you hold a large quantity of clean water and you only have to change it every few days. And the only other thing is, like I was saying, we use what they call Vital, and this is an electrolyte mineral-based um, substance, uh, supplements, what it is, okay? And it's got a whole bunch of stuff here, and you just have to read it and, you know, find out what it's got, but... Basically, really what it is, it's like have like humans drinking a Gatorade, okay? So, you put a little bit of this and mix it with your water every time you, you feed them. And this just, like I said, helps it boost their immune system. And it also helps with just keeping them, you know, a little, maybe a little more disease tolerant. It just makes the chicks healthier until they can survive more on their own and their immune system is built up. So you just want to put a little bit, bit of that in there. The directions are on the back. Tells you what to do. This bag right here is probably gone for about 3,000 birds. So it goes a long, long ways, folks. Okay. The water system. Now what you need to do there, again, is, is take one of your egg crates. Because, you know, and you want to keep this up a little bit because them shavings, them flying around, hopping and chasing each other around in there, what's going to end up happening is they're going to get this thing full of pine shavings. You're going to have to keep cleaning it out. 
So there again, you just want to take you some scissors and cut you out a little square, big enough, just to get that thing up off them shavings just a little bit, okay? And I tend to kind of like to keep the water a little away from the food. It gets the birds exercise and they keep moving back and forth. And not only that, it's more important for them to have the water a little more warmer temperature than the food. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll put that in there and I try to stick it in the middle. That way the birds have an even area around to go ahead and get in here and, and drink. And if you put that there, you can see it doesn't sit down in there. It's raised up a little bit. And you have to play around with this. I've even used a bricket sometimes. But you just have to mess around with that and get it the height you want. But now, that's about it. Now we're ready to put our cover on. We have our glass already on here. And this is a piece of about quarter inch tempered glass is what it is. And it goes all the way up to here. Um... This space back here is open for ventilation and it's also open so I can control the temperature. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put this 250 watt bulb. It's an infrared bulb is what it is and it's a heat lamp. And this is what you really need to have to sustain the right temperature in here for these birds. Okay, I've got my heat lamp on and as you can see it's 275 250 watt bulb, infrared bulb, and it's red. And the reason you want a red bulb, especially for quail, is that quail are known, especially bobwhite quail, are known to be cannibalistic. They will peck on each other, they will peck each other and try to get the mites off from each other, and by doing that, they end up pecking into the other bird and drawing blood. Once they draw blood, then all the other birds are attracted to that blood, okay? And with the red light in there, it kind of masks or disguises or camouflages the uh, red, the, the blood a little bit, so they, do, they don't see it if that should happen. So with, with bobwhite quail especially, you need to watch out for cannibalism. Now, as far as uh, Tibetan quail or feral quail, Conternix quail, uh, they don't cannibalize that much. They, they pretty much gather in a colony or a covey and they, they pretty much get along with each other. Anyways, the top here is, like I said, basically what this is, is we got us some uh, sheets of about four foot by two foot uh, tempered glass, okay? And I just had access to it. You don't have to use tempered glass. However, tempered, tempered glass is stronger. It will withstand the heat if you've got to get the lamp close to the glass. And not only that, it, it won't shatter and break like regular glass will. So I don't think I would use plexiglass or anything like that because what's going to happen there is that's going to melt. Do you need a piece of glass? No, you don't. If you're brooding your birds inside of a garage or a building, you're going to be keeping a lot of drafts down long as that bulb's in there, and as long as you maintain about a 95 degree temperature, your birds will be comfortable. Which brings me to my next thing you must have is a thermometer down in here so you can monitor the temperature of your brooder. Um, that's why I have a hole in the back so I can slide a piece of, another piece of glass or wire back and forth that I can uh, keep an eye on my temperature all the time and keep it what I want. I want. I want temperature somewhere between 95 and 98 degrees just as soon as they come out of the, the hatcher, okay? And then after a week, you can start decreasing the temperature a little bit every week. Now, three weeks from now, we will move these birds and transport them out to our brooder houses. That'll be another video, um, a little bit more drawn out video out there but I just wanted to show you a little bit about this is how we do it now you guys out there and you gals out there that are just hatching out a few quail for the family you want to get you know a little flock of like 25 going or something like that you don't need to be this dedicated or this uh, have this big of a system you know you can use a cardboard box just once again be careful of the fire issue but you can buy tanks like this even smaller. You don't have to have a big tank like this. These big tanks are about $100 and 
the only reason we got them so big is we're doing this on a commercial level and we have about 10 of these tanks that we have birds constantly in and um, you know so you don't have to go overboard like we did you can you can make yourself a little brooder the main thing about the brooder system is the heat you got to keep the heat up there while they're young chicks and if you watch your chicks they're gonna let you know if they're comfortable if they're out and you come and look at them and they're out running around and they're moving and drinking and eating chances are you've got the temperature just right and they're comfortable if they're all cubbied up and it looks like they're shivering a little bit and they're chirping they'll chirp a lot if they get cold you need to boost the temperature up a little bit and what you can do with your light the way we have it is just drop the light down a little bit closer and that'll disperse the heat better so anyways i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it explained a lot of things if i left out something guys that an unanswered question just go ahead on the comments below here below this video and send your questions to us and I'll answer them the best way you can we've been doing this now for probably 20 25 years and we've got pretty good at it over time and um, so you know if you have any questions just please feel free to comment below and like always please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're gonna be doing a lot more of these quail raising videos here in the near future. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Jim from Quail Hollow Bird Farm. We'll catch you again in the next video.